So verse 21, I see no differences or separation. Even the multitudes appear as a single formless desert to watch naturally. And we've been checking this ourselves, isn't it? In such a way, we're saying that when we look, we don't label, we don't label to these things. We don't make labels, we don't interpret anything, we don't judge anything. We just see as the impersonal witness, when we see that all of this is one appearance, I see no differences or separation in this one appearance. Then without the interpretive mind, without the subtitles of the movie, it is just seen as one appearance and separation needs for us to make a concept, to use our mind. Even the multitudes appear, whatever might be appearing, you could have an experience where you see the entire multiverses, infinite in number. And you transcend time and space, you transcend the body and everything is possible. But even the appearance of these multitudes, they appear just as if it is one single formless desert. When we don't make the distinction between grains of sand, then everything is seen to be one screen on which this movie is playing. One appearance. To what should I cling? This is very important because remember what the question was, Janata's question? Who remembers what the original question was? Collaboration, what is the question? <clears throat> what is it? The first verse. It's attachment. Knowledge to be attained and detachment achieved. Liberation to be found. So, detachment. And like this, to what should I cling? Once you see that all of this is just one, there is no separation unless I start this mental process of labeling mental ideas, then what can we be attached to? There can be no mine. There can be no sense that this is mine. I want this as a desire and there can be no sense that I don't want this as an aversion. So it is attachment which plays in this way. And the minute we fall into this trap of this is mine, then it is the root for you know, suffering. Why? Because once we attach to something and say it is mine, we feel this that this should be with me forever. See all these love stories that we read. Okay, will you be mine forever and ever? Not even this, not even this this lifetime, but all lifetime forever. So we are searching for something eternal, but we are looking in the wrong direction. And if we're looking in the wrong direction, then we are attached to an appearance and say, Will you be mine forever? And then you see that, no, it's not. After all, we don't even, maybe we don't even want it forever. <laughs> it just seems like, oh, it felt like that right now, but right now I just need some space. <laughs> so, this, this fallacy of saying that something is mine is false because. This is the constantly changing realm. So the minute we say something is mine, then we want it forever, then we find that it is moving, it is changing. And that is bound to create some suffering if we are attached. Even when we say, I just don't want this, this should not happen. You see, and life inevitably makes something like that happen. So even when we have an idea, we are attached to something not happening. You see, even that is dissolved, even that is, that is seen through. So when we see that even the multitudes appear as a single formless desert, to what should I claim? And to see this oneness of this appearance also is very beautiful. We'll come to the oneness of non-separation between awareness and consciousness itself. You see, but at least in this appearance, when we can start to see that it is all just one, all of this is just one clear. Then to what should I claim? To make an attachment, then they seem to be very hard work. To 
watch, right? It's a beautiful watch. Thank you.